coming up on iPads in the Classroom, it's apps for the elementary classroom. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin, and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today I'd like to talk about some apps for the elementary classroom. And these are apps that can do multiple things and help kids practice, create, or really uh, experiment with different aspects of learning that happen in the elementary classroom. And the first one I want to talk about is actually an app called Playground. And I love that name because it implies you can play, and you can play in this one. It's got a lot of games that allow you to play different games with music, with uh, words, and uh, memory, and uh, math. So let's look at one option, and this is a music game. So you can see there are three options here. And what you do is you help create the song. So you help create it and there are different levels where the task becomes harder and harder. And I'm just showing, modeling how you would start this and then if you tap it, so it actually plays it for you and if you press on this you can see that there are different levels that can be played and then obviously the complexity grows over time and the expectations grow over time so this is a way to get a lot more practice in this case by looking at music and its relationship to its uh, notation so this one as I said was music but you can see that there are lots of other ones drag your finger connecting Tiles to spell the longest words possible. So here you make words. So for example, uh, we can make the word, I don't know, net. And there are lots of games like that available online. This is just another place to do that and to get, again, different levels, different difficulties, and the ability to see. So if you want to see, what happens in a higher level of difficulty, we get more letters, it gets more complex, and you have to carefully consider where kids are and how much they can take before it's too much for them and they have to uh, log off. It has at least two other games, the Fractions game and the uh, iPaint game. Both are available also as individual apps and we actually talked about their Fractions app a while back. It's a fantastic way to teach kids about fraction and have a lot of practice with visualization. So that's something I recommend. Um, let's look at another one. Let's look at their words. And in the words app, you get to practice spelling in this case. So you get to practice, you get to spell, and then you get to do it by category, which helps vocabulary development as well. So you can see that there are lots of options here, but what's great here is that kids can create and they can create and then others can play it. So you can press on create and you can see you can create specific games for others to play. So you can create words, you can create memory games, puzzles, and music. So it's a way for kids to interact with each other or to show their proficiency, not just by playing and going through the levels, but actually by creating, which is really where we want kids to be and where we know they're fully engaged in thinking about the things they're learning. So this one is called Playground and it's highly recommended. The second one that will be fantastic to use in any elementary classroom is called Kid in Story and this is also good for parents if you want to do it because this allows you to incorporate to write a story and it's aimed actually at adding the child into the story and there's nothing that kids like than having them inserted 
into the story. So I'll give you an example that the makers have. This is called Faces I Make. And this is where the photo of the child would be. When people are happy, they smile. Here is my happy face. And you can see that it's being read, but the text is also there. And you can go through the pages and do all of that. This is my surprised face. Okay, now I'll look very angry. So you get the idea. Now, there's directions how to make it, and there's also the ability, if we go to edit, we have the ability to start a blank story, to take something from existing uh, from uh, the existing books or to use the community library. In the community library there are a lot of books made by others that decided to share it and if you make yours please share it so others can use it and they can, you can then download lots of options from things that others have created and you get the credit, uh, in this case Ellen Edwards or the actual maker of the app that created these but you can see lots of others. And the great thing is that adults can create this, but even better, it's when kids can create this. So I'll show you how to create one quickly, um, just so you can get the idea. So we're creating a new story, and we're starting to write, and we can add a background, and again, we can choose photos from our library or from uh, the camera. Right now we're inside our studio, so we don't have a lot of areas, but we'll use uh, this rather desolate uh, picture, right? And let's do done. Here we are. And then you, we can add a kid and we can choose from the library and I can go to my library. Now after you choose somebody, you've got to make sure that you scale it right. You click done. And now you have to define the area. So you've got to mark uh, either the child or the background. So in this case, I need to mark the child. This is the photo that I'm going to use, and you mark it this way. And now you have to define the background. And you can see, you can just see it in red. And this will be cut off away from the photo. And you can do it approximate, it doesn't have to be exact. And you can correct a little bit. Actually, smaller fingers would probably work better with this. And then when you're done, you're, doing, you're saying save. And now you can add, the photo is added to any background. So I can edit kid, I can move. So move and scale, I want it much smaller and I want it in the corner. So, oh, maybe looking down at the area. And that is done. And now we have that page and I can start writing and at the same time I can also record what I just wrote. So this one is called Kid in the Story and it's a great way to get kids to create, write their own story and then they can share them through email and through uh, the app with other people and have them being read to it, have it being read to them, or have uh, others just go through the process of reading. The last app I'm going to talk about is actually part of a series of apps for different grade level. And the simple word, the simple name it, it has is just the grade level. It's called first grade or second grade or third grade. And it's by learning games. And it has free games and then games that have to be purchased. And it's fairly well done and well synchronized to the grade level. So you can actually easily find out if this is working for you or not. And in the cases at least that I've worked with teachers, they've recommended it because they felt it answers the things they need to do at that grade level. So you can see this is first grade and it's work on pattern, for example. So you can see the game that looks at pattern and which number comes next. So in this case, it'll be a nine. So you can see that there's immediate feedback. There's some measure of how successful you've been or not been. And Way to go! Which picture comes next? Try again. 
So you can see that it gives you some feedback, it didn't work, try again, it also takes that option off, so it waits for you to be successful. So you get the sense of this one, and there are lots of other games, and by the way, to exit you need to do this. So it has some controls to make sure that kids stay within the game and don't immediately leave, or just, just um, accidentally touching something doesn't throw you out of the game. So. Uh, today we went through a few different apps that allow kids in the elementary classroom to interact, practice, and create. And the emphasis here is we want always kids to play and learn, but also the ultimate goal is for them to be able to create in the world that they're growing in. Really creation is where we want them to be. We want them to be creative, we want them to be original, we want them to be active and engaged in learning, and this is one way to do it. So we talked about Playground, which has both playing and creating. We talked about Kid in the Story, where we create and create stories for them, but they can create it themselves. And then we talked about some practice items in the different grade levels with grade level uh, learning games. And this is great ways to use the iPad in the elementary classroom where kids are working on their own. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the classroom.